Welcome, everybody. Fun times, back above 50,000. So question is, where do we go from here? And we're going to dive into that. It uh, pushed right up to 50K and pulled back as I thought it would. And question is, where do we go from here? Uh, I do think we have a, a pullback coming uh, short term, but we've revised our bounce target. So you want to stick around to the end. And if you're watching the uh, replay on YouTube, uh, please hit the like button and the subscribe. We're going to be doing some big changes here, doing some live streaming. Uh, we're starting to upload some shorts, which are short uh, clips out of our classes, our Retire Rich class and our M3 Active Trader class, which is um, tomorrow. So today is our sort of free training class for our indicators, which you can find out more about all of this at moonstream.io and including the crypto mastery indicators that we're going to be talking about, showing you that's our secret weapon. But moreover, we're going to start with the news dive into some charts, let you know what I'm thinking and uh, how we can find some opportunities. Do you see some good opportunities in the market? So why don't we dive in into the news and let's see if you do have any questions. Uh, Pirate J asking retest 48. I, you know, we could, we could retest 45 possibly, you know, originally I was saying 38 and 32 K, but we're going to look at that and uh, let's see. Okay. All Sweden is white. Uh, Malte Bergen. You know, Sweden's a great country. I spent, uh, spent a week above the Arctic Circle, uh, just north of, you know, up there at the uh, Ice Hotel. And interestingly, that was 10 years ago. And we uh, dog sledded up above the Arctic Circle into a cabin and watched the Super Bowl at four in the morning. They didn't have a flat screen. They had to fly one in. And uh, great time. Ice Hotel, highly recommend it. Uh, and uh, old Stockholm is uh, beautiful. All right, guys. So with that out of the way, uh, we will dive right in. So uh, the news, you guys already know this. I'm going to go through this pretty quick because I know you're probably here for the charts. And I'd like to get an overall view of the news, kind of put a frame around all the information so we know what we're looking at. Let's see. So uh, we'll go around the the block, as it were. The news is not always really newsworthy. A lot of this is designed to get attention. Uh, so we'll unpack this. Un this person here who I don't know says over 11,000 rally in the cards for Bitcoin, this bull market. Um. <clears throat> We'll see. Institutional cycle, certainly possible. You know, a lot of this hinges around the 10 factors that I've been outlining in our M3 Active Trader class and share with you guys sometimes. The 10 smoldering campfires that could really ignite the rest of them and explode all of this. But we want to be a little bit careful. Markets have come so fast that uh, we do we are due for some kind of a pullback. We want to see that. So I'm just going to scan the uh, headlines here. And then we'll come back in front of it. Uh, Bitcoin whales gobbling up $6 billion worth of Bitcoin. I just read that Peter Thiel is investing $200 million into uh, Bitcoin and just did that. So that's newsworthy. I, I want to get any breaking news. That's why I don't pull these up early in the morning. I want to get the latest news for you guys. So Crypto Panic is a nice uh, aggregator we can turn to. So here we have on-chain data. You know, on-chain data is okay doesn't really tell us the timing of it. And, um, you know, I've proven that a number of times, but it's good to keep an eye on. And so in that headline, let's see, it's saying that on-chain data suggests massive, massive correction looming. So, you know, we don't want to panic. We don't want to FOMO. We want to just have an idea of what people are saying. And uh, let's see, just skimming some of this. And if you guys have anything you want me to talk about that you've seen out there, uh, let me know, but certainly uh, this is the big news, 50K. And let me just hop over and show that to you real quick so that we are all on the same page of what's happening. And uh, I've got a number of different charts and chart layouts here. So yeah, Bitcoin uh, down 1,500. Guys, I'm not going to lie. I've been I've been calling this perfectly. Did you know We said we'd go up to this golden pocket here around 48.5, and we did, and we pulled back right on the ETF news. And uh, I, I have it drawn there. Let me find that other chart that essentially shows that this is a pullback range. This is the Fibonacci golden pocket. And if I expand this out here, that is the 2.6, uh, sorry, the 0. 0.618 to 0.65 sliver right in here. This is a weekly chart. Let me go to a daily uh, next. But I've had this pullback zone up here for Guys, that's been at least a month or two, right? So um, this zone is predicted. We popped up in this range, pulled back, popped up here yesterday in the upper range of the trend channel. If you guys want a really easy, relatively simple way to gauge these markets, uh, to gauge the coins that you're in, when the pullbacks are going to be, that's the most common question I get is when should I take profits? And right here, there's a nice confluence aside from our indicators that uh, really told us that this was going to pull back. It went right up. 
to the upper trend channel, which we can see here. We're also going to look at the uh, total market cap, which gives us some great clues. And uh, saw some profit taking, went right up to this point, right up here around 50,500, a bit more. It doesn't have to be exact, but you can see that it got right to the top of this golden pocket as I have it drawn here at 50K and pulled back. Big question is how does the week close? This is a weekly chart. And, um, you know, very bullish candle right on this and pushed up. But I do expect we come down at least retest 44, 45K. You know, we'd like to see it come down a little lower. I'd like to see it come down at least to 43, <clears throat> kind of a moving target, you know. But uh, there's several support zones in here, 40K, 38K. And really the bottom of that trend channel would be ideal. So I have this drawn at the bottom of this trend channel, essentially, or down to the 32K support. And, um, you know, but I, I had drawn it yesterday on a different chart. I sent a market update to our members and suggesting that this 45K could be the the next support zone. What's the answer? The answer is have some powder dry, dollar cost average, be ready to buy at each of these levels if you are not an active trader and you just want to put buy limits in. I'd say 44K. I'd put it at 45 because everyone's going to be trying to get ahead of everyone else. It's musical chairs right now. And there is still a lot of money on the sidelines. Nobody wanting to get left behind. And there's a lot of institutional money, ETF money still waiting to come in to this market. So uh, keep that in mind. If we do come back down to 40K, 38 to 40K would be a great range to deploy some more capital. But I do realize not everybody has unlimited capital. Nobody wants to miss out. And many people are already mostly fully allocated. You know, a lot of our coaching clients are about 50% cash, 50% in the markets. And I'm recommending allocating, say, 25% more, but having some powder dry. The next dip, wherever and how when it comes, is going to be the best opportunity to really capitalize on this next wave of the bull. Now, there are some bears seeing that we're going to come back much deeper. Um, I don't really see that. If we go look at the total market cap, and then I'll go back to the news, we can see this. And pretty clearly, and guys, I'm sorry, I've got different chart layouts. The other one that has all that data on it is going to be, and let me just pull this up here. Uh, this is there, and I got to go there, and it's going to be the Bitcoin chart. There's so many charts here, it's hard to keep track of them all, you guys. So that's the Bitcoin total market cap. Um, all right, it's not pulling up in this view. Let me see, maybe it's this one, this one. You know, here's what we'll do. We'll draw it again so you guys can see how we're doing this. But essentially, uh, the total uh, market cap here is uh, these key levels. I'll turn off our early reversal indicators. By the way, that's also one I'm waiting for. If you're new here, these arrows, this is our early reversal indicator called the market top perfectly to the day and to the week and here. And you can see these green arrows also calling the bottom. We've just added these buy order blocks, which are great to show strength. And so uh, that's really what I'm waiting for to become bearish. I don't think we're in a bearish phase. We're in an upward trending uh, trend cycle. And unfortunately, I've got to do this here. The uh, toolbar tends to get in the way too. So uh, one of these days, we've got to permanently figure out how to turn this thing uh, off and make it uh, go away. So give me two seconds with that. And uh, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and hide that. So I'll put that over on the left for now. All right, so basically, if I turn off the ERI for now, but you can see that it nailed it perfectly there. And on the monthly time frame, it told us exactly where to get back into uh, the markets on Bitcoin with um, this uh, big green arrow, that arrow there on this monthly time frame. So total market cap, what I was getting at is these big round numbers are going to always meaningful. The uh, market cap top was $3 trillion, as we saw. And I'll go to the daily so it's a little bit more clear. And then... Um, uh, so the uh, total market cap came down on the monthly time frame, told us to get back in um, back in <clears throat> January. Sorry, a bit all over the place, you guys. I want to try to show you a lot. Some of you are new. Some of you have seen this. So essentially, uh, here is God, these charts are really messy. And uh, normally I have this all queued up for you guys. But here, so you can see this green arrow right there. It's only triggered four times on the monthly time frame. And we had it trigger in January of 2023 at the depths of the bear market. And we were, of course, telling you guys to get back in in December of 2022 when everyone said we were crazy. And uh, in this big candle, right, is is where we knew to get in. So right now on the monthly time frame, we don't have an early reversal indicator. I'll come back to those 
in terms of the uh, the indicators for us, but uh, the general way and the easy way to look at it, if I can just get back to a daily time frame. Uh, you know what, guys? I'm going to change my uh, watch list here back to our Crypto Mastery watch list and uh, just see what our signals are telling us. So not a clear signal here on this ERI. We'll come back to these a little bit overbought. You know, we are in a bullish sequence on our trend indicator. So, you know, it, uh, it would appear to me it can go up a little bit for a few more days and and play around in this upper range before we start to come down. But here's the thing. When we get this far ahead and above the 21-day EMA, this is like a rubber band that pulls it back down and generally we'll see a bounce off of that. So I think today and the next few days, we're going to see a pullback in profit taking. But this blue sliver here, again, is that is that golden pocket, which we draw with a uh, quick Fibonacci retracement. I'm trying to keep this simple enough for most of you. Many of you are familiar with this study. If you're not, all you have to do is draw, redraw it here, delete that. And let me turn off all the other studies. That's a problem with this toolbar. It always gets in the way, right? So coming from the market cycle high, and I may just want to pull up that other chart in the other time frame. I'm sorry, you guys. This is usually a lot smoother. Let me slow down a little bit. And I'm a new... This is going to be too much. Okay. Coming back over here for a second. Kind of jumping around a bit, but I want to be that this to be clear for everybody. So that, uh, here we go. The, uh, this is the halving cycles. Do have a new indicator to show you, by the way, on that. So if we come down and uh, draw this here from the market cycle top down to the bottom, and I'll hit the settings to the version with the golden pocket on it. There, all that here. So you see this, you guys, this push right, push right up into this golden pocket zone. Now, does it mean it has to reject here? It doesn't. With all this ETF money, it could, it could still go higher. I don't believe it will. We're right in this level. It touched it barely, but we really needed this to come up to the top of the range. Plus 50,000, that round number usually does pull back. And what I think we would see is a pullback to around 44, 5, 45, and then the kind of bounce from there. So something more along these lines. Uh, having trouble with these indicators here, or the tools here today. So a pullback and a bounce. Pretty simple pattern. That's what I think. And once we get above 50,000, the good news, we're on our way higher to new highs. And uh, I do have, I do believe we're going to see 100,000 Bitcoin potentially by the having, uh, we have a study that we talk about tomorrow. So I'll pull that up when we come back here and uh, get back to uh, the uh, the news. So let's dive back over into the news real quick to make sure we uh, covered everything there. And let me uh, just pull up to see the chat if you guys have any questions. Uh, I'm not uh, right here. Perry's asking if I'm buying or not selling. Right now, I'm holding and looking to take some profits. If you're in Bitcoin, I, you may want to consider take some profits here. Wait for a pullback. Not financial advice. You guys have to make your own decisions. I can kind of give, uh, I can give recommendations to a group. We do give coin recommendations in the M3 Active Trader class tomorrow. But in this class is primarily what do we see in the general markets and what are the indicators showing us? It's also a training uh, on our uh, Crypto Mastery indicators here, which as you can see, I've been calling these macro swings perfectly. And uh, we'll get into that in a minute. So on the Bitcoin chart, um, okay, tell you what, let me, let me do this, you guys. <clears throat> I'm fumbling around a little bit because I have a, a bunch of different sets of charts. These are the Crypto Mastery ones. I'm going to load up the other ones from our other class. That way it's going to be a lot more clear and uh, we won't have time to uh, get into all of them, but I want to make sure I'm sharing with you what I want you to see. So normally these are reserved and not reserved, but we go a little deeper in the M3 Active Trader class, which is we meets Wednesdays. So let me just pull that up so we're not hopping around so much. Futures down 444 points. That's uh, to be expected. Yesterday was a big day. They pushed everything up to the 50K mark. And uh, as these load, we'll come back to it. But that 50,000 mark, big profit-taking level. And of course, we saw sell order blocks uh, in that uh, range. So you can see that in this clear indicator here. And um, so anyone knows how to turn off these uh, uh, 
uh, I always have a bit of a pain in the ass with the task bar getting in the way. So this <laughs> is giving me a lot of trouble here today, you guys. And custom location on the screen. I seem to have sort of gotten, no, it's in the way again. Okay, I'm going to put it back to the bottom for now. And uh, okay, so here we go. All right. Upgraded the internet to gigabit speed. It's just a little bit choked here, and uh, I've got to get Comcast to fix this. So, you know, doesn't always work as uh, we want it to. So with this here, this is the study I want to share with you guys that I've just redone. Take a deep breath here. And uh, basically, this is showing why I think we can go to 100,000 Bitcoin in front of the halving. So I did a study on this to our members last night. You can see these are the same Fibonacci projections that took us up to the market cycle high last time over here. And that same data that's drawn the same way this cycle puts us right at 100,000 right here, potentially by March. Okay, so what uh, this is this exactly stretched out a bit and it's following pretty closely. See that? And uh, we came right up to 50K, which would be which would be uh, expected right in the 50K range and then come back. So a little bit of a retest here over the coming weeks and days and then pushing much higher. I think that's what happens. Okay, so a little bit of a pullback, see how that overlays. Also gets us right to 100K by March and potentially, potentially 150,000 by October this year. I think 210K by 2025. That's the long and short of it. So what do we do now? You want to kind of wait and see uh, what happens over the next few days. I, now is not the time to be buying. Uh, we have come too far too fast. We need some kind of a pullback. You know, we have had this drawn on here for a while. Pull back to this middle range. Push up right in this golden pocket as I have it drawn. And sure enough, it did that again yesterday. So really firm retest. So I think we pull back here. If I move this chart line over, and these things can be drawn different ways, right? But uh, this is what I think. We zigzag a bit, we get above 50K, and then we come back to retest 50K, and then it's off to the races. Okay, so that's how I'm playing this, you guys. Uh, now, Bitcoin, profit taken in Bitcoin can be good for the altcoins. We're seeing some uh, profits going into altcoins. So as we see this pullback here, I think we see some nice altcoin opportunities as money and profits flow out of Bitcoin. Bitcoin dominance drops a little bit, and uh, we see it flow into the alts until it resumes and we get that retest. So timing-wise, don't look at this. This usually happens faster. So timing-wise, put this out to uh, April or so. However this looks, this is kind of what I have in mind, and I'll draw it a little bit wider. All right. Any questions, you guys? I hope I didn't lose you on that. All right. Um, right. I'm gonna. I do have some questions. We'll come back to the charts. Just wanted to get off on the right foot and see what's going on out there. And so let's see the uh, chat here. I've got, uh, yeah, Tony Fox token had a nice jump. A couple, one of my um, coaching students and our M3 members, Alex uh, nailed that. He, 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 he was talking about that in class yesterday. He did great on Fox token. So we can look at that. Let's see a good time with Bollinger Bands. Okay, Perry, Bollinger Bands on uh, Bitcoin. Let me come back to that. I want to just touch on the news a bit. Um, one of the other sell signals that I like to use is the modified Bollinger Band with the standard third standard deviation, not just the two. So uh, a little different than the stocks. Uh, let's get our let's get the frame around the market here today and see what's going on in the news. So Founders Fund. This is Peter Thiel. I talked about that a little bit. Uh, he's a smart guy. If you haven't read the book or heard the audiobook Zero to One, I just got through that. It's excellent for any entrepreneurs building SaaS companies. Uh, Peter Thiel, smart guy. And so uh, here is uh, renowned, so renewed interest in cryptocurrency from Silicon Valley. This is what I want to unpack. I know many of you just want the uh, TLDR on this, but we want to know where is the wind blowing? The historical hotbed, that's a great term of novel technology. So again, Peter Thiel is the, the Founders Fund, and so they just invested $200 million to buy some more crypto. Uh, actually, it's been going, and they're releasing late summer of last year. Let's see. And he just put a bunch more money into it, though. So the fear of the FTX collapse is coming out. We have the GBT selling has stopped. The, uh, the over-the-counter market supply has dwindled, so now we're starting to see price push higher, and that's because the supply is diminishing. 
demand goes up, supply goes down, and vice versa, less supply, more demand. So there's a number of areas in that we'll unpack and, and we go into a little more detail in tomorrow's class. But uh, let's just go skim through this a bit. Again, Peter Thiel founders fund early Bitcoin and sounds like they're buying more. So that's all I want to unpack right here. And again, a lot of these, they don't want to be left behind. So I, this pullback is going to be limited. You know, nobody wants to wait and have to chase the uh, higher the highs. The other article that I want to talk about is the uh, that pullback that we saw. And so let's just see what they're saying about that. So we don't get too far off, off of target. This one here, where did it go? And Founders Fund, it talked about it down here, saying that it's looming. All right, well, we'll keep going. 50,000 first time since 2021 on ETF demand. No new news here, so we can get past that. Reuters reporting exclusive Peter Thiel's Founders Fund. We already talked about that. Uh, so he's already in. They made $200 million before the bull run. Okay, so I'm sure they're they're investing more. That's a bit of old news as well. So that's uh, from Crypto Panic, and let's go back here. Cracking malls a bit. I don't see Bitcoin breaking records. But be careful, Coin Buzz. So there's not a whole lot going in the news right now. It's mostly in the charts. But as you know, I always say, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Some uh, something about Ripple. You know, we're not really following Ripple. It's it's not shown in the charts that there's a lot of interest there, and so I think that's going to be something we don't need to really follow. We don't do a lot uh, with uh, Ripple. Former. So this is the article I think I saw. They just bought another hundred million. Peter Thiel. We can move off on that. Uh, here's here's an article we want to look at. So <clears throat> this is something I'd heard recently too. The miners. There's more buying than the miners can produce. So the ETFs are sucking up 10x more than the Bitcoin miners can produce. So when we get back to the charts, this is one of the 10 elements that can take us to 100,000, 150,000 Bitcoin. And a lot of it has to do with that, uh, the reduced supply. Keep in mind when the halving happens, currently the miners are selling about $12 billion of Bitcoin every year to pay for their energy costs, to pay for the mining rigs, these ASIC miners, I don't know if you guys know this, but when I'm, if you go to the Bitcoin conference, hopefully you'll go in Nashville this summer, Mike and I will be there. A Bitcoin miner is no longer a computer. It's more like a uh, meat meat cooler or a uh, tractor trailer, small uh, tra tractor trailer. You walk into this thing, it's air conditioned. There's tons of these uh, CPUs going and they're expensive, energy wise and cost wise. The point is after the halving, that $12 billion sales pressure that the miners are selling is going to be cut in half. So less supply, higher demand. This is all leading toward an explosive market. Um, that being said, I, I do want to exercise some caution in the near term and be ready to be ready for a pullback at any time and to be buying the dips. We'll show you when you can time those dips almost perfectly with these indicators that we've created and been fine tuning for the last two years. So we're going high level on the news, I understand. Uh, that's all I really want to uh, unpack here. We see BlackRock, of course, iShares. I have a chart on the iShares, by the way. I'll flip over. This is an early indicator of where things are going. And hold on a second. I got uh, two sets of charts up here. Where's the iBit? Uh, it's in here somewhere. Hang on a second, you guys. Not this one, this one got a lot of charts. We're at. This was it. Okay, watch. This is the iBit. Uh, we've been following this since it started. Actually, that's a study I did on it in TradingView. Where did that thing go? I apologize, guys. A bit all over the place today. If you want to see that uh, study, it's over on my TradingView account. Uh, here's that golden pocket again. Somehow this chart got closed, but this is essentially it. And if you hit play... <clears throat> we were tracking it down here on $25 on the iBit, had this nice cup and handle pattern, broke out of it around February 7th, about a week ago, and we've seen this ETF volume just surging. So that's where you can see that BlackRock uh, volume surging just from the uh, ETF there. 375 million rounding up flow and fidelity starting to inflows 151 million and 40 million ARC1, uh, ARC exchange whatever they call that, um, Kathy Woods, 21 shares. So th this is interesting. What you want to think here is the trend is going higher with these ETFs. 
And it looks like this is some kind of a graph showing that the miners produced 1,000 Bitcoin worth 50 million, and that was only 10% of the Bitcoin being hoovered up. So where is the rest of it coming from? The whales with a thousand or more Bitcoin are also buying. So at some point soon, this is really going to put a ton of demand pressure and supply shock on the markets. So let me just pause there for a minute. When there's there's Bitcoin flowing off of the exchanges onto cold hard storage wallets, there's less available to buy. And uh, that's going to really skyrocket price. That's what everybody's been sort of talking about. And we're finally starting to see this. And the grayscale outflows have slowed significantly, uh, meaning that it's only a matter of time till this thing really takes off. So it becomes the question of these ETFs, do they just say, F it, we're just going to buy it up and run it up anyway? Or, which I believe they're going to cool off a bit and let this thing sell off a little bit here. Okay, and, and that'll be where we'll be watching very intently with our early reversal indicator and our trend uh, strength indicator to, to nail that dip in the bottom. So we did a study last week about buying the bounce versus buying the dip. Kind of a different strategy. Uh, I'll get to the charts and we'll look at that in a minute. Just kind of forming our overall thesis. Uh, this is interesting too, the crypto greed index. All right, so let's pull that up. And uh, we, of course, have the... Uh, Fear and Greed Index inside of our members area for those of you in the M3, but let's just pull it up online. I don't always watch this, but if it's at the highest level since the all-time high, that uh, would indicate another reason why we're due for a pullback here. So let's just pull this up as that loads. And um, here we go. Well, that's okay. Yeah, that that's... <clears throat> when we get up in these high extremes... Certainly, it's a bit concerning that we are due for a pullback, okay? Because last week, we were at 64. Last month, we were at 60, right in that middle range. 79 is extreme greed. Retail and the masses are usually wrong. And this is where we see people FOMOing into these markets, and you don't want to do that. If you're all in cash, I would say get in the game, but I would hold... 50% or more on for a pullback. I'd rather buy into strength, by the way, than uh, try to catch a falling knife. And even if you pay a little bit higher, you have strength with stability. So we'll find that in the charts. So let, let's kind of skin through the, the uh, news here and really move forward on into the charts. But uh, yeah, this was something I posted on Facebook yesterday. Pompliano was on uh, CNBC talking about this. As we already noted, 12x more demand for Bitcoin that is being produced on a daily basis. So, so keep in mind, here's the, the show. Um, be very uh, careful when everybody is FOMOing in. And, and we are, we're there right now. And uh, so... So yeah, how much longer can indebted Americans keep buying crypto? This part of the rally, though, is being fueled not by retail. This is the whales and the ETFs and institutions. Uh, I accidentally highlighted these parts when I meant to highlight this. We, let's take a look at this as well. Bitcoin price, 1.6K and hot CPI data. Yeah, we did have some CPI data this morning. Let's take a look at that. And this is something we usually dive into a little bit more on the... Um, uh, tomorrow's class. You can find out more about that at M, uh, Moonstream IO, moonstream.io slash M3. And I'm going to pull up here news and events over at Forex Factory. Let's kind of see what's going on with the CPI data. And sure enough, let's see. Uh, we had this morning, today as, uh, let's see, the 13th, we had CPI month over month. Okay. Yeah, that was a bit hot. CPI coming in a bit hot here and uh unexpected so forecast was 2.9 came in at 3.1 percent so consumers price uh, index uh is showing a little bit of um weakness there we want to see when does the ppi come out and any other news is uh, coming up here so all right we'll keep you guys posted this is where we, we cover more of that in the uh, active trader class want to keep it high level here and I'll get to the questions here in a minute. Let's just unpack this. Uh, Bitcoin price drops on CPI data as markets price out the Fed cut. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think the Fed's cut rates in March, not sooner. But uh, we can pull that up here as, as well <clears throat> and see what the, the uh, skew is on that. So 
news and events, economic data, FOMC, and meeting calendars, and the Fed Watch tool. Let's take a look at this and see what that's being priced in at. But uh, but you know, here's my thesis, and we uh, we've unpacked this quite a bit in our M3 class, is that uh, the uh, bank term funding program runs out in March. I think they'll still see bank failures, and then the Fed will be forced to drop rates once they've broken the economy. So this is the target rate probabilities for the March meeting. I know they are, it's 92% that, um, let's see, <clears throat> in the 525 to 550 range. They, um, yeah, that's interesting. You know what, guys, I'm going to save that for tomorrow because we're getting a little bit too deep into this. So we want to stick with news and the, uh, the charts. So I tell you what, let me just look at Crypto Panic one more time. Yeah, this is the one I wanted to pull up, the market correction looming and see if this has any uh, merit that we can pull up in the charts. So let's see, we have, I always keep in mind who's saying this, but analysts, which could be anybody, a lot of them are looking to make a name for themselves, spotted bearish signals, you know, like we've already talked about that, upper range of the trade channel and uh, golden pocket, and we'll look at the Bollinger Bands. So Bitcoin current price reportedly not an ideal entry, targeting 45.5, I already told you that. So again, uh, the TLDR on this is I think we do have a pullback and it, it's uh, we have a lot of people waiting for a deeper pullback that may get left behind. And so we sort of, we did bounce down to 38.7. We just, we got really close to my target at 38K and then we bounced. So the theme here and the nuance that I want you to keep in mind is look for these clues. Is the market buying a little bit of head of key support? That that shows a bullish sentiment and a bullish bias. Bullish bias, uh, or are they letting it come down to the the visible support, which was at thirty two k, thirty eight k? So they're front running it a little bit, and, and that means people are afraid of this getting away from them, and we're going to see buying pressure a little bit ahead of where we think it could be. So if you're setting your buy limit orders, I put them a little bit above. You know, it's art and science, but uh, you may not catch it exactly, but you'll get in and we'll get left behind if you're doing it that way. Okay, so I want to, what time is it? We're getting, we're going a little bit long in the news. Let's jump over here and um, I'm not going to get into on-chain metrics, you guys. That That's kind of a waste of time. And and when I was at the Bitcoin conference in 2022, some of you know the story, uh, Dylan LeClaire, the editor of Bitcoin Magazine, in a whale session that I was in, he, he did a whole hour on why on-chain metrics showed we won't go below 30,000. And uh, I was the only guy in the room that raised my hand and said, what do you think about people like me who think we're going below 20? And he sort of laughed at me and the other people in the room looked over at me like, who let this guy in here? And I'm sure... A lot of them wish they had listened. So, eleven uh, percent rally in the bull market, institutional crypto. Let's touch on this early stage bull market now showing up. Okay, this is some positive bullish news. Gobble up, yeah. So, this is interesting. Michael Van Pop will skim this. Uh, this I believe is true. This altcoin season is going to be massive, and that's good news for all of you guys. Okay, and the crypto's headed. Now we're going deep into the news, maybe a little bit too much. CryptoQuant sees uh, CEO sees Bitcoin rallying above 100,000 on the back of ETF inflows. That's what I was showing you. Let's look at his timeline. And um, okay, Arthur Hayes, always a smart uh, president thinker in these markets, reverses his short-term bearish stance. Yeah, I saw a video of him because uh, about a week or two ago, he was short the market. He was buying puts. And um, now he has reversed that. So let's see what he has to say. All right, we've got more news than I want to get into. Let's just dive into it. Uh, let me jump over to the comments real quick, you guys, and see if I'm missing anything and make sure we answer your questions. Uh, where did that go? Um, it has disappeared. Let me just see. I've got to hit this hotkeys. Gotcha. Some consolidation, uh, KS says, among Bitcoin miners, sometimes after the halving, their baseline opex is going to do uh, double after the halving operating expenses. Yeah, that would make sense. You know, maybe um, hot eight there that's having some trouble. They'll, there'll be some M&A in that space. Uh, risky business to be in Bitcoin mining. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> Alex says, how many retail traders can keep up buying crypto with credit? I feel personally attacked. Uh, yeah, Alex, uh, good job on the Fox trade, though. Fox token. You'll buy with everything I can and, and more debt to the $34 trillion. That's funny. 
Uh, buying with credit card debt is another version of mar buying on margin. I, I would be careful of that, sure. But um, at least with credit card debt, you don't get liquidated. And uh, let's see. So limit sell. I missed a few things. 296, able to pull my initial buyout. Just see some chat. Okay. Yeah. And Tony says Fox hopped up to about 120% over the weekend. Yeah, Tony. Uh, Alex, who's here, he's uh, in our M3 Active Trader class uh, in the chat. He did very well with Fox. We'll pull that up. And um, let me get back to it. I know your time is valuable, everybody. So uh, we covered that Bitcoin on chain signal early stage bull markets not showing. I'm sorry, now showing up. Says analytics firm Glassnode. Glassnode, of course, is reputable, if not uh, a bit mm, too many too many uh, indicators. It goes down a serious rabbit hole. On chain demand metric historically signals early stages. Yeah, you know there, there's a number of these metrics. I'm going to show you one called the Bollinger Band um, width which is interesting, which is showing a very bullish signal off of a, a long-term low. And uh, we're going to cover that tomorrow for the first class, first time. I'll pull it up here today. So, um, you know, let's be honest. These charts just make your eyeballs hurt. So let's not get into this. Uh, all these on-chain metrics, you know, they're fine, but they're they're not, in my opinion, as good as some good old-fashioned TA and our indicators, frankly. But, uh, Michael Vandepop says all coins will go higher than you imagine. And uh, updates is on the Ethereum prices, ETH, Sol, Link, and finally Compound, all looking good here right now. And uh, so he says that X is, sorry, all coins are going to reach unimaginable new all-time highs. Let's imagine that for a moment. Yeah, there, there are some. That's why I think, I think we're going to see some face-melting gains. And like Solana, if ETH goes to 15,000, Solana should go to 3,000. It's about 100 right now. And there's some other really interesting charts we're going to uh, unpack and uh, our portfolio on the M3 Active Trader tomorrow. Uh, so how many of you guys are in M3 Trader, by the way? Uh, we have a, new, a lot of new faces here today. Maybe just chime in in the chat. And, uh, you know, if you like, if you're liking that class. Uh, so I already know the answer there. So um, we're getting to, I'm not going to get into too much price here. We have on-chain metrics saying bullish. Crypto quant CEO sees Bitcoin rallying above 100K. I already showed you that on the back of ETF inflows. Sure, but I think we still have a pullback. And, and here's the reason why. Yeah, all these people saying M3 is great. Cool. Thanks, guys. Um, the ETFs, they're raising money and deploying it as fast as they can. BlackRock had two billion up front, allegedly. Um, these other companies, if you don't know the cycle, the ETF, you know, the owners go and they call of their financial advisors, advisors, their RAs and RIAs, and say, "All right, push Bitcoin," and then they've got to get on the phone and call all their best clients and say, "We're, we're pushing Bitcoin now," and can you wire in the money? And then the client wires in the money, and then so there's this delay. What it did is it slowly gobbled up the GBTC selling for the people getting redemptions, moving over into other funds for lower fees. And of course, FTX dumping a billion dollars of their GBTC for, through the bankruptcy proceedings. And uh, and that's subsided on the uh, over-the-counter. So now it's into the spot market and that's what's happening. So from here, we ha it's, it's really a tough, tough pivot here to see. It's 50-50, but the charts tell us everything you need to know. Show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. We see a pullback here to 45K area, and then I think we we take off. If we have any, um, I won't say black swan, if we have any unexpected bad news, then we could dip a little bit farther and still Arthur Hayes. Uh, I don't think he's changed his mind on the bank term funding program yet. So um, a small bounce, a pullback and a bounce, and then we get closer to March. March 11th, we see, I think we're going to see some bank failures. Everyone's going to get spooked. They'll sell off the market. And then as soon as they see that come down, they'll be buying it up. A lot of what's happening now, by the way, also, and we'll show it in the charts, is uh, is liquidations, stop losses. At these inflection points, people are going, they're getting over leveraged right up at the top. The market makers push it up and they liquidate the longs and then all the shorts pile in. And then they drop it back down. So you're seeing these big swings at these key inflection points. And that's why it pays to be careful. 
All right. Um, <clears throat> let's just unpack this a little bit faster and get into the charts. As I said, the co-founder CEO of Market Intelligence Crypto Client, Bitcoin Exchange Traded Funds inflows could propel Bitcoin to all new time highs. We can see that in the charts. So show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. Um, we don't need all this. And there's nothing really new here for us, you guys. Okay. Well, we've covered it all. So much for the news. I will comment on this real quick. Arthur Hayes. Let's see what he is saying. And he's no longer short-term bearish on Bitcoin. Interesting. I do pay attention to Arthur, Arthur Hayes. Uh, he's been, um, he's, he's a very smart guy. Uh, that the crypto king convincingly proved him wrong. He bought his puts, so he's no longer in his puts. 35K put options. I thought he was doing that as a hedge, though. And not as a profit. So, yeah, I saw him on Crypto Banter and he said he's expecting Bitcoin to hit all new time, uh, all time highs end of this year. Well, I agree with that, but no longer anticipating any significant correction. Okay. This is what I was digging for. And sometimes when you're jumping around in the news, you're, you're looking for that needle in the haystack. This is it. And um, so this this reinforces what I'm been I've been saying, and look, new information equals new decision. Is that right? I was firmly of the belief we should pull back to retest 32k, and we should. It's a very strong support resistance level that has not been retested. Does that mean we are going to do that? I don't think so. Now, 38k would be my low, and we'll talk about by the dip versus by the bounce. And I think by the bounce is around 45K. By the dip would be where you might put in limit orders just in case, 38K, um, short of a black swan event. So, um, but I do feel uneasy about that 32K level not being tested. I just think what's going to counterbalance that and overpower that, uh, if you picture the bulls and bears tug of war, the bulls just got a big, fat, super muscular anchor tug of war guy named the ETFs, you know, more BlackRock and Fidelity just joined the side. And that's and that we have to keep that in mind and not be married to anything in the in the charts, because, you know, not to say it doesn't come back down there later, uh, but that is um, we'll have to see. That'll be interesting. Yeah. So Arthur Hayes saying my short was a cheeky short position. You know what? I think the Fed's going to renew. Uh, well, why did he say that? The Yellen came out and said she would not renew the bank term funding program. So he faked himself out there, old Arthur Hayes. You know, he had a, he, he here's a good example. You should stick with your initial analysis. Too often we go back and second guess ourselves because Arthur Hayes' essay uh, on this very subject saying that March 11th will come. He thinks the banks will fail. Bank term funding program not renewed. They break the banking system, bank failures. We already have the bank in New York that's just reported a $200 million on paper loss. Likely they'll go out based on commercial real estates. And that is kind of the elephant in the room. Um, China having serious real estate issues and, and having to print a lot of money. And I think, and I've been saying for a while now that the U.S. commercial real estate market, the other shoe never dropped. And I think that, uh, you know, I think that that commercial real estate market, go to any city, it's it's looming. So banks go out, break the banking system, Fed comes in, has to rescue and start lowering rates, printing money, of course, election season. So I see that happening. And uh, Arthur Hayes should have stuck to his guns on that. Uh, but anyway, um, I won't say he's, he's obviously done a lot of things right. Uh, here, he said, Bitcoin did swoon a bit in March when the banks started going under, maybe it'll get a little bit similar this time. I thought it would break 40,000. It did. And anyway, we're getting a little bit uh, too much in the weeds. Good interview here. If you haven't seen it, Crypto Banter is a pretty good show. All right, you guys, with all that out of the way, uh, let me get rid of this. Let's get back into the charts and uh, see if you guys have any comments or questions. And um, let's see where this is that. Okay, total market cap, which I want to make sure I'm getting in the right charts here and give you something to look at while we do. Okay, let's see. Traders keep up buying, buying with credit card. I think we covered all that. Um, <clears throat> all right, you guys are chatting away. Feel free, love it. So uh, let's open this up a little bit. Where do we want to start? Um, there's a lot of things we're watching and we go into more detail again in the uh, M3 Active Trader class like the DXY. 
Uh, for those of you that are not aware of that, I'll just give you a little bit of an idea and where you can find out uh, more about that. Here, uh, you can find out about all of our services if you're watching on YouTube, by the way, at uh, moonstream.io slash M3. Uh, we have a uh, monthly award-winning newsletter with some excellent picks, uh, one of which went up 18,525% in 2021. The Crypto Mastery classes and indicators, which is what we're here teaching. And I'll show you some more nuances on our indicators here, which are excellent. The best I've used in 20 years, developed by a quant engineer. And then... Um, also, we have the M3 Active Trader class that meets Wednesdays. If you like what we covered today, a little more, a little less news, a little more charting and actual coin picks in the M3 Active Trader class. You can find out more about that at moonstream.io slash M3. A little bit about my background. You get daily access to me in a private signal chat, a very secure daily commentary, often uh, coin picks. Then we do a live session on Wednesdays at noon. That usually goes about an hour and a half, two hours sometimes. And you can see some of the great reviews there from students and uh, members area with some training. Also some other things like dollar cost averaging checklists and a portfolio tracker, as well as some cheat sheets, like some high probability candlestick patterns and trade setups, et cetera. But really the value is in the weekly classes, as you can see here, I, uh, I do trade and have been trading for 20 years. But really the backbone of what I have and what we've created in terms of our our edge is in the indicators that we use and those are included in the M3 program. So you can now sign up for that monthly and learn more about that here. Okay, let's, uh, let's kind of dive into uh, some other things. And what uh, we normally do is we'll look at hot movers, but I wanna cover the um, overall market for you guys and at least uh, give you a signal. Now look at the uh, the new indicator we have, the rocket indicator. Uh, this was a pattern that we noticed, I noticed not too long ago and uh, programmed that into a new trading view indicator. Let me turn off these order blocks here. But uh, isn't that cool, the Bitcoin daily, we had a rocket here, shot up, a rocket here, shot up, we had a rocket here, shot up. And then just in the last few days, we had a number of rocket setups. And uh, do you guys remember which ones they were? Let's see, FTM, nice little one on FTM. ALI had one, beautiful rocket signal shot up in the sky. And that's the signature of the rocket is it'll, it's like a uh, bottle rocket. We call it rocket on the launch pad. And when you light the fuse, it shoots up in the sky, it runs out of fuse, and then it comes back down to earth. So AL, ALI pulling back down. So, um. But really the basis of uh, what we do here is in the ERI, the TSI, and the signal and bell. Let's pull that up and see what we see in these markets. So let's jump over to Bitcoin. I'll look at Ethereum. Maybe we can look at some hot movers for you guys. All right. So uh, interesting, though, I will point out that we're seeing some bearish divergence in the RSI coming down and both on this longer term and on this so we see price declining quite a bit on the RSI versus our brief pullback uh, in the price here today. So, you know, look, I think that um, we are due for a pullback. All the signs are pointing to coming back down in this range, and then we'll see what happens. And uh, over, but, but here's the thing. So on our trend strength indicator, it's curling over, but hasn't gone red yet. And it can stay overbought for a longer time frame. So let's slow down and make sure we're uh, going to catch anything that we're seeing on these charts. And for now, I'm going to take these off and just focus on the uh, indicators that we use in the class. So the top crypto mastery indicators. So we have uh, the ERI showing we don't have a clear signal on that. We have overbought TSI. The signal line is kind of it's a bit overbought. I, another signal we're going to go lower. And the volatility index up in this overbought range, what we'll be looking for is when it comes back, back down below 80. The cool thing is we can set alerts on these. And so condition, what I'm going to say, I want to do crossing down below 80. That's the nuance there. And I want to do it once per bar close. The cool thing about the vol index, uh, which is not one of our primaries, but it's uh, excellent in confirming and uh, the direction. So when we break out of the lower range from red to black, very high likelihood it goes 
higher up into the overbought range and it can stay here for a long time. And only when it kind of breaks down below, sometimes it'll bounce back up, but this is when it confirms with the other indicators, very high probability that it continues uh, as we saw here, here and here. Let me get rid of the stochastics there. And when these all line up, it's, it's, it's such a high probability trade. And um, if you guys will recall, if you're new here, we do have a free trade checklist you guys can get a hold of over at uh, moonstream.io slash free checklist. And what we do with the way we use the indicators is the more of these that line up, you check these off and it gives a trade score down below. Okay. So if you get a three or more on this trade score, generally it's worth getting in the trade. And uh, we, so let's say we see a rocket there that gives it a point. If you see the volatility index, turning up above from below that would give it a point and if it's turning below that would subtract a point so this um we can let's find a coin and go through this usually we pick a coin and go through the trade checklist if there's any that you guys want us to look at though let me know and i think let me see here how many of you are new here because my challenge often is how do I keep this interesting and engaging for everybody? Some of you are in the M3 Active Trader and coaching in our Retire Rich classes. Some of you are new and the first time seeing this. So I think the overall question is where do the markets go? Okay, good. Yeah, some new people here. Kevin Maltebergen, forgive me if I mispronounce that. And uh, so let's kind of slow things down a bit and I'm going to go over to a chart let's do a daily chart of bitcoin and let's see we kind of talked about bitcoin already let's talk about eth for a minute but bitcoin i believe pulls back uh your entry zones again 45k on bitcoin eth also hitting a bit of a top here most of ta does not have to be that complicated uh and those of you that are new here uh, Leland, welcome. Are you guys using TradingView like this, or are you more looking at charts on Coin Market Cap or something like that? Because if so, this is, might be a little overkill for you. But um, here, let's clean up all the studies so it's just a nice bear chart. And again, the biggest thing that I would say, and that's new for us, that we weren't doing as much in 2021 are just using these trend channels. Um, oh, you know what? Let me come back to that. We talked about the other factor showing the top of this market here. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a copy of this chart because it has too much on it. And then we'll look at that Bollinger Band. So, okay. Uh, Bitcoin Daily. Three BB. Okay, bear with me here. So I got roll. Thank you for time. All right, Kevin, that welcome. Uh, feel free to check out our other services there. Let's see. I'm going to remove the indicators, remove all drawings, have a clean chart of Bitcoin. There you go. On the uh, indicators, so what we're going to do is look at that uh, Bollinger Band. And I, the Bollinger Band with the with percent, I want to share with you, but most of you haven't seen that yet. So um, here's the thing on a Bollinger Band. This is nothing new for you guys, obviously, but it doesn't really contain price like we want it to in crypto. And uh, what I noticed and what I've been kind of discovered is if you change the setting on that to a third standard deviation from two, that it contains it almost perfectly. So now what we see is the Bollinger Bands are not yet showing we would be overbought. So that's the thing. We saw it over here when the ETF was also released, pulled back down. Doesn't mean it has to, but that's why you have an alert at 52K. So those of you here who are looking for a little bit of alpha, there's a good chance that this starts to look like a top. The shorts pile in and they spike it up to 52K liquidate the shorts, get everybody long, and then they dump it. That's the pattern. And we when we touch that upper end of the third standard deviation Bollinger Band, that's always a clue to sell and take profits. Doesn't mean sell everything. I'd sell half, two thirds, wait for a pullback. So 
that's the caveat here. I think we are due for a pullback, but we could still spike the 52. Point being, if we start heading higher, don't FOMO in and start chasing this. Yeah, Perry says the market does what uh, causes the most pain and screws the most people. Absolutely true. All right, well, now we can hop back over uh, to ETH and we can look at a few other things. I am going to pull up our average true range indicator. So that's interesting. Showing back into entry zone, we like to catch these inflection points on the ATR, which can also act as our stop loss if you're long and short. But uh, when we first catch a break to the upside and uh, on the ATR is a good signal that it'll continue. So I like to toggle that on and off. And uh, as I was saying before, using trend channels, parallel trend channels, which is down below, below this, this darn taskbar. If there was a way to just turn that damn thing off, I would love to do it. Lock the taskbar, automatically hide. And uh, on Windows, I have not figured out how to just turn it off completely. So I'm going to... Um, uh, I can have it open. Going up to a main taskbar, windows open. Okay, I see I was able to do that, but I just want this thing to go away. All righty, um, hang on a second. I'll just move it over here. All right, parallel channel time. So basically, if you draw this, that's our kind of guiding light. And when the trend channel changes, the sooner we can catch that, the sooner we know to get in. Right, So when that flipped right down in this range, great time to get into Ethereum. And similarly, this downward mini channel, once it sort of got out of that range, do you see that, you guys? This is this perfect inflection point when the 21 and 50 EMA start to turn up. So a little bit of resistance here on you know, Ethereum. Do we have any sell order blocks in that range? We, here's, we do not. So this is what's very bullish on Ethereum, you guys. Uh, whereas Bitcoin, a lot of sell pressure, right at where we are see this and and i'll talk about buy the dip and buy the bounce now so these order blocks this is where on the exchanges there's a lot of sell orders limit orders and so buy the bounce is a great place to look for both on support but where there are order blocks and buy limit orders whereas buy the dip is where there's very strong support regardless and you might use a limit order there now if that's confusing i'll, I'll talk about that um, this, uh, okay. And let me widen that out a little bit. Okay. Any questions on that, you guys? So essentially we now have a nice upward trend channel and, uh, it should continue, but it's toward the upper edge of the trend channel. So this is why we want to kind of see where is this thing likely to reverse? And uh, we, this is uh, Bitcoin, obviously, but uh, it's at the upper end of the trend channel. Again, it could go up to 52K, but we have all that sell order pressure. Point is, by the bounce, here's this 44, 45K region. And this also coincides with coming down here. We'd want to catch that. We'd love to catch this thing pullback down around 44, 5, 45,000. Okay, however, we don't want to put limit orders there because if there's a deeper correction and we lose 45K, you know, then you've gotten in too early. So by the bounce, I look for our signals to turn bullish and then buy it. Similarly, down here. Now, because I think that 30, I think that these are, you know, by the bounce, uh, I'm, I'm changing my opinion here because although 32K, again, very strong support resistance level, I think this uh, buy the dip is going to be the lowest we go on a correction, I think is 38K. Now, if something starts to dip down and we and new news comes out, I'll revert these back. Certainly, you know, if we do get down to 32K, that would be a place to have limit orders in and buy it, buy the Buy this not out of it, 32K, if we get down there. Uh, and here's why you guys have seen this before. All the way back in 2021, uh, broke through, firm support came up, a lot of support at 32K throughout uh, May 2021, pushed up to the highs, market top came down, briefly held support, flipped as resistance, then became resistance, resistance, and then the breakout. We have not retested that very significant level in 32K. 
So right now it seems odd that we would come back down that low. And again, I think the ETF money will keep us above that. But when the ETF money runs out and distribution starts happening, there's another study that I did, we, we won't go into today, that shows where I think the next bear market bottom could be. And uh, TLDR, it's 35K. I think we go to 210K and ultimately come back to test 35K. Now, that's pure speculation. But that's pretty close to 32. So this, for me, will be a forever line in the sand by the dip. If you ever see Bitcoin at 32K again... Sell the house, sell the kids, sell the car, sell it all, buy it. Not financial advice. Just saying. The clarification here, and again, we talk about this more in tomorrow's class, is buy the dip versus buy the bounce. Buy the bounce, you wait for the signals to confirm. Right now, our ERI, our early reversal indicator, overbought. Likely to pull down. It can stay up here for a while, though. But uh, we are bullish down here on the signal, our trend indicator. These are known as the four kings, by the way, when we have our ERI, our TSI, and signal and trend indicator all aligned. This, of course, is a sort of a longer term indicator. Kind of looks like Mario Brothers come running out, grabbing all the coins. The key is the key says it's a trend, a new trend, and the bell is the buy signal. And then the number sequence, the bag of money, is where you sell and wait for a new key and bell. So we're in the middle of a buy sequence on Bitcoin. We don't have a sell signal yet. Uh, the TLDR on this is I think we I think we kind of bounce around up in this 50K area a bit, and then we see the drop. We see it sell off down in the lower end of the range, and then we start to look for our buy-the-bounce signals, which would be a bullish early reversal indicator here, a green arrow. Where was the last green arrow? I know you're looking at a lot on the screen if it's new to you. The last green arrow was here. Was that a good buy entry? I'm talking to those of you that are new, but it's good review for everybody. This is our, hence the name, early reversal indicator. So powerful, you guys. This is, if you're just using RSI, if you're just using MACD, everybody is. This is a whole new level. And I won't go into what's inside of it. The arrows are the easy version for you guys. The actual indicator looks like this but you guys don't want to look at this I, I know i know what this means i but i had the guys program it as let's make arrows so they don't have to decipher what all this means there's a lot of quant work in here there's keltner channels there's a lot of uh, different variables in here that i won't go into but it was an accidental discovery if you're not using you guys these in your trading you're missing out guaranteed so i'm not here to to shill these on you but these are the most powerful tools i've ever used and give us an edge you can learn more at cryptomastery.org or get them with uh, our expert education at uh, in the M3 program. So what we are looking for specifically is a new ERI, this green arrow, confirmed by the trend strength indicator going from red to green. These are our strongest signals. And then confirmed, what we do is we leg into the positions. ERI, TSI, open position. Signal line, because these are based on different algorithms. Goes red to green, add to the position. Like professionals, we build as we go. And in this case, we got the bell at the same time as the signal line. You don't need to know what these are built on. Brilliant quant engineer partner buyers who created these. These are the four kings. ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. And you can see how that performed. That caught this got us into Bitcoin around 27,000. Now we were buying in January of last year as well. We had a number of ERIs, but when they start to align is when they're super powerful. And that's why we've made the checklist available for you guys. So when we see an ERI, we'll check that and say, okay, this is interesting. When we see the TSI go green and above the 20 line, we click that. And now we have a trade score of 12, two, sorry, two out of 21. Sometimes usually that's enough to get me in the trade, has a signal line turned from red to green, check. These are the four kings. Is the trend indicator showing a bell, check. And is it uh, have a midline green? So now if you're at this point, you're a score of five out of 21, you want to be in the trade. High probability. 
we add in other things like bullish engulfing candles. Is your is the candle at EMA support? Exponential moving average would be a check. So when you start getting into higher levels of trading, uh, the trade success score, even more probability. Okay, you can use this without having our indicators. If you just you won't be able to check these off, but you have the uh, EMAs, trend lines, other patterns. And so you could go get a copy of this, by the way, at uh, our website at the bottom on moonstream.io. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can sign up for our free newsletter on Monday and uh, crypto trainings Tuesdays like here today. So you can join in live and then the trader success checklist here, plus some other free uh, resources for you guys that are new. Uh, let's see. We got a couple chats going on. Um, yeah, Mike Newton is uh, is our my illustrious co-founder, the, the original founder of Moonstream, uh, excellent, one of the smartest people in Bitcoin, bar none, sort of a private person. The only way to get access to Mike is through our classes. Uh, we do a Thursday class also for something called Retire Rich. That's more emerging markets, longer term buys. Uh, and the M3 Trader here, the hat I have on, that's more short term swing trading. It's what I do and what we do there. Uh, retire rich is emerging markets the new netflix the next amazon of the blockchain and we've got a uh, portfolio there that's done very very well so just just letting you know something for everybody uh, and mike and i teach that class on thursdays uh let's see pirate chain um pirate j yeah so 2500 pirate chains that was a big winner for us uh, we recommended that back in 2020 i think and that went up quite a bit all right, back to the, uh, the the news here or the uh, charts. So basically, that's what we're looking for. Does that make sense, guys? Buy the bounce. Whatever your signals are, you want to be looking for buy the bounce when the signals tell you, whereas a buy the dip is just buy it if it hits that price. And that's up to you to decide. 38K is also an important support level that I will be watching for. And when in doubt, zoom out. So if you go back here, zoom out a bit, maybe put it on a five day or a weekly chart just to see these levels. And we can see all the way back here, important resistance, support, 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 and then it lost it. And then it was resistance here. So 38K is the next level of strong uh, support where I would just buy it, buy the dip. So that's the difference between buy the dip and um, buy the bounce use the signals to tell you when that bounce has occurred versus the actual levels, 32K, 38K. So I think we've covered Bitcoin in detail. I want to move on to some hot movers. We're over an hour into this. Uh, we uh, have been looking at ETH a bit, like some short-term resistance here. I think probably it pulls back and rallies hard up through that support and that resistance at 26.78. Sol has been looking great here, uh, looking for a fresh breakout on Solana. And if I show you my targets here, I'm not going to show you my upper target. That's for our M3 members. But uh, I sort of gave it away earlier in this session. We are at 110 Solana right now. I think we easily go to 180 and if not 450 to 700. But I think uh, I think we go much higher on, uh, on Solana. All right. So some hot movers from last week. This was one called Pendle we hadn't heard of. Look at that thing. Continue to rally up. Would not buy this here. It's gotten away from us. The indicators are overbought and it's so new that they're not going to apply as well. Even if I go to a daily here, I'm um, not sure. That's also hard to find. Where is it? It's on Binance. Uh, Metis was a hot mover last week. Metis is consolidating here. I do like Metis and it's in the payment processing areas. Kind of competes with Say and Solana and a number of these other ones that are in that game. But as we can see, we have a bit of a bearish ERI and it's been overbought on the rest of these. It's, but here's the thing with this chart, I think Metis has consolidated and is ready to run again and target, I would say around 136. We took our eyes off that for a minute, you guys. And we were watching it back here, end of last year, uh, back in 2021, Metis has had a hell of a run. It's gearing up to go higher. Let's take a look at our indicators again. And I'm going to look at it on a weekly basis, which gives us a longer term trend. This is the concern here. On a weekly basis, Metis is, is coming down. It's broken down below the 80. Trying to hold here. A little bit concerned about that. But I do like the daily chart and how it is riding the 21 and 50 day EMAs. So I think we do push up and retest this 140 area. And that would give you a nice little bounce here. Potentially yeah, about a 50% trade. So not bad. Uh, looking at some micro caps, a number of these sort of curling up. Um, ASM ran up already. That was one of the hot movers from weeks ago. Not looking good. So I tell you what, 
since we're here looking at indicators, let's look at some hot movers. And if there's anything you guys want to look at, let me know. Here's the uh, top movers for this week or for today, rather. Let me refresh, make sure we have that uh, the latest look, the latest coins. Perry says BCH. We can look at Bitcoin Cash and SCI. And uh, SCI, love it. Haven Coin, thank you. That was one of our favorites that uh, fell off the face of the earth. Um, yeah, we know we're very familiar with Haven Coin. Uh, love to take a look at that. Why don't we do that now? Uh, since you asked, we'll look at XHV privacy uh, coin on uh, Monero. Um, XHV delisted on that exchange. That's right. Uh, we were looking at that. In fact, Haven Coin, I'll pull up our indicators in a moment. That was uh, one of our recommendations. We caught a nice 100% pump back in here. And I was recommending Haven Coin right in here. And I thought we would see a secondary push and it just cratered because the hate, the privacy coins were targeted and just so low volume, right? So we saw this little, I believe it was back in here, you guys, right around uh, in, uh, that's 2022. Where was it? Do you guys remember? I was, I recommended Haven Coin. We caught a nice little 100% bounce and then it dropped. I think it was here and it fell down and just the volume dried up and then we kind of bounced back up. So here's the good news on Haven Coin if there is any, it's, it's a double bottom potential W pattern. If you've been holding it, I would hold on to it. It's a lottery ticket. And, um, you know, Monero's in the doldrums as well. Problem is here, the government, the SEC seems to have it in for privacy coins. And what I would say though, is set an alert right above here, potentially to add more. And in this region also, um, because this thing, if it breaks above this downtrending trend line and it can come back and retest, it likely bounces back up again. So I have to, let me just move this damn taskbar thing out of the way again, access my tools. You know what I'm going to, I think I have a solution. I'm going to move my tools up into that region in that way. Yeah, you think by now, guys, you think by now I'd have figured that out. Uh, it's had a bit of an off day here. So here... The W pattern looks like this. Specifically, though, this phase of it, break that long-term trend line. It'll reject here, retest that, and then come back, retest. This is the pattern we're looking for here on the Haven coin. Okay? So why? Uh, all these supports and resistance generally retest. Break out, retest. Break out, retest. Break out. And then there's some more, you know. So this, but if you have it, if that's the question... Uh, I wouldn't dump it now. I would hold it here. <clears throat> Let's see what our indicators tell us. So, bullish. ERI, all right, this is a good example here. Uh, the ERI, double early reversal indicator. Now, the new strategy we're using with our ERI Pro is using it as a dollar cost averaging tool over time. And we're working on a new strategy based around that with Joe, the programmer. So whereas currently we're looking to catch reversals only, and in these three specifically, we would have not taken because they did not confirm, they were not confirmed with a TSI also green. They work very closely together. Whereas this ERI and this ERI did confirm. We are working on a combined indicator to make that easier. Does that make sense though? For those of you that are new, you might be saying, well, these three arrows, the, they were not reversals. Well, early, hence the name early reversal, doesn't mean buy just on that alone. Because these vertical lines, we didn't see the TSI go green above 20 here or here or here. It went green, but not above 20. So our trigger is green ERI TSI above green. And those are the buy signs. So from here, I do expect it to go higher. We're green on our signal line as well. And then the trend indicator Again, this one is uh, showing key and bells. There's a bit of a nuance with this that we've talked about where I like to see the green line slope be 45 degrees or more. Over here, we saw this huge breakout. Boom, the slope was there. The problem with Haven right here is it's, it's, a, it's very low volume. And that was the key lesson we learned, even though the charts were telling us it would go higher when the volume just got destroyed 
uh, in went went like back in here, that was the end of it. And you can't, it's hard to support these things. So I tell you what, if you have some, I'd hold it. Uh, nice looking chart. It's in the green. If we look at a weekly chart and see how that looks. Also looks good though. So here, hold my, uh, hold the phone. I almost said hold my beer, right? So hold ERI green coming off a double bottom. The weekly TSI, I would be waiting for that to go above green. So I'll even set an alert on that, which is a cool thing about the indicators too. Crossing up above 20 and then I'll be alerted next time. And I would say I would be considering a buy there, although where it's only on Coinex. Uh, is Haven on uh, Uniswap still? We sort of put it off our radar, um, but reluctantly really was, liked the project. Now, questionable. I'd have to look into uh, how much they're really still developing it. Anyway, um, SEI. So SEI is a different story, and um, I have I own some SEI. I own some SUI, and this is one we've been watching for sure. Okay, so this is a good example. ERI here, yes. TSI right after that. This is just recently. Of course, we would have liked to catch it back here. We had an ERI there, TSI here, and, and the order block on the ERI Pro. Launched this thing all the way up, hit some resistance. So this is now the resistance to break. But we're seeing some order block pressure on, say, uh, I would say, uh, <laughs> no pun intended, I would say, own some say. And uh, they're calling it a Solana killer, not a Solana killer, but certainly doing some really interesting things, a great ecosystem, also competing for the TPS wars, transactions per second, like Metis, like Cadena, like Solana, but a um, uh, great ecosystem that has other uh, benefits. And so we, this is actually one of our recommendations in, um, in our services. So key in a bell, um, it is, it's going to struggle a bit here, but as you know, if you've been here a while, the breakouts usually happen on the third or fifth time. And my, um, but I'd like to see the, the ERA, the EMA is too many acronyms, guys. The um, exponential moving averages, 21 and 50. That's what we use. That's our support. Here's my read on this. I think instead of breaking out on the the third attempt, I think it's probably going to meander a bit and break out on the fifth attempt. You guys know that uh, uh, my spidey sense is pretty good on these. Why? Because the, the EMAs are too are too low. It really has to get up closer to launch it higher, you know, jumping off that trampoline to push through. Could it happen this time? Sure could. And if it does break out on this attempt, expect a retest. So point is you could buy some here, take some profits and then buy more on the on the pullback, you know, or continue accumulating with ERI. But we're in we're green in the four kings. ERI TSI signal. Uh, where did the signal go? And it disappeared. Uh, these are there's still relatively low volume projects though. So uh, on say anyway, uh, so much so the signal is not even showing up. Okay, but uh, we do have other tools as I showed you uh, in the Crypto Mastery Suite that you get. And by the way, you can get a month free if you go to CryptoMastery.org. Um, listen, I know you're using other indicators. If any of you are here and not using these. You are at a disadvantage, and I can only teach you so much. These are the backbone of what we do. I haven't talked about the radar yet. Um, the TSI signal, the e, these are a little bit out of order, but um, the dynamic ATR I've shown you, the vol index we looked at a little bit, um, but let me just turn on our dynamic ATR. So this is kind of like, you know, are you in a buy range? You should not be buying if it's in a red exit stage, only entry. Say has been in buy entry range this whole time. Has it uh, has it fallen off? No, it's a good way. It's it's also a good stop loss. That's actually what we use it as. So entry on the dynamic true range is also a dynamic stop loss. So if you're wondering where do I put my stop losses, right here, and then you can raise it. I wonder if we could program an API into like three commas or something that would dynamically raise your stop loss. This is brand new, you guys. Because that's the problem with stop losses. With three commas, you can have it as a percentage pullback. I'd much rather have it as the uh, dynamic average true range because you see at no time in this push higher did price go below the lower band of the ATR. It, it contained it. And as soon as it does, you're out. Um, say doesn't have enough history. We'll look at another one. 
does it take a little bit of time to learn these indicators? It does. That's what these Tuesday classes are for. So, but and many of you who are have been with us for a while, we haven't really talked about this. The ETR, when did it turn bearish? When it broke and closed below the lower edge. Now it touched and, and went below the lower ATR, but it, it, it sort of turned red briefly, but we didn't get an exit. Here's a new nuance for you guys, especially M3 members. You've asked when the candles turn color. When they turn color, it's indicating a possible reversal. See this blue candle? It turned blue because the lower wick broke the lower edge of the dynamic ATR. It's saying, hey, wait a minute, we could have, we could have a reversal, but it it didn't, it came back up. Here again, it went blue because it dipped below the lower band. Now, I like a 50-day EMA as a stop loss also. So it came down and bounced off of that. But the point is these together are excellent. So it did turn blue and flip to exit when we started closing below Right, we got below and closed right on the lower edge of the dynamic ATR. So we were in bearish mode. No bullish trades in bearish mode on the ATR. Okay, that's another caveat. So we did have, you know, there are nuances with everything, you guys. It's not, if this were easy, everyone would do it. But isn't it better to have these clues, these hidden invisible clues? So bullish ERI, T aside, normally we would have bought that. But we were in red on the ATR, invalidated. So our super indicator that we're going to build, it's just tricky to add these together. It would not show these buy signals because it's in red ATR. However, now we're in entry mode. Does that mean we go buy it? No, we're looking for other signals of ours to also go bullish. Okay, and then this one here tells us we're in take profit. This is first take profit signal and the next one. Ideally, we're looking for another bullish ERI uh, TSI going, you know, staying green, and another key and a bell. And uh, and that'll give us a lot of that the clues. Let's look at another one. What else do you guys want to see? Uh, Pith, we can look at Pith here. Let's look at one a little bit more. Um, uh, Perry says, okay, BCH, let's get back to that. I don't want to leave anyone behind here. Let's just look at an ME, uh, MEXC. <clears throat> so let me turn off the uh, ATR. The ATR is just going sideways. Uh, I'm not a big trader on a, the uh, BCH. And we have a bullish buy block here, but I don't love this chart. It's just going sideways, sideways. Maybe let's look at it on a weekly time frame. Um, weekly is a little bit better here. It's above the 21 and 50 week EMA. You want to see this thing break out. I would set an alert here. Give me this there. Uh, break out above 302. And so put an alert right above that. But I do like how it's, look at this, higher lows, higher lows, 21 day, 21 week rising up and above the 50 week, call that to the thick ice. And uh, we, have, we use the analogy of Wayne Gretzky. Where does he go? Where the puck's going to be? Where's Wayne Gretzky? He's up here. He's waiting for the price. I'd wait for a breakout above that. Our indicators are showing, you know, it's a, it's a janky looking chart though. Sideways, sideways, push up to the next zone. So from right here, we don't have an ERI. We have a TSI signal and key. Um, I'd buy the breakout, honestly. I wouldn't really. It's too early to tell on this weekly time frame. And on the daily time frame, uh, it's just, it's so sideways action. This this could go either way. I would want to see a break and close above 302. Honestly, your better trade on this if you're looking to buy it is why it doesn't let me use this tool when there's something out as see push higher and on the retest that's where you want to get this one because this shows signs of strength i wouldn't buy it before because this this uh 300 level has been rejecting once twice three times you know the fifth time third and fifth time usually go but this very long consolidation i guess the bonus of this is that um this tends to break out from consolidations, but it's just kind of a janky looking chart, very low volume. I'm not, not, I wouldn't personally be uh, scalp, a uh, scalp short. I wouldn't short it, Perry. You know, because you know, you're above, above the EMAs. Uh, I wouldn't short it. I wouldn't touch it. When in doubt, stay out. Just my opinion. All right. What else do we have? I've got to cover a couple more and then we'll get going. 
and let you guys go. Let's see what else did I miss. And I missed a few of these. ETH, where are we? BCH. There were some other ones we were going to look at. And uh, Matic. Okay, let's look at Matic and then ABAX. And then we'll wrap up here. Well, Matic was looking really good last night. I shared that with people. It's uh, It was finally looking ready to break out. Where is Matic? Right here. on the. Uh, but now we had a bearish ERI on the daily. But we have a, a new key and a bell. It's just... Same kind of thing. There's a lot of consolidation and uh, not a clear sign here. On the weekly chart, I mean, I think Matic will have its day, higher lows. But uh, we have a wedge forming, you know, so we would want to see a breakout, you know, sort of symmetrical wedge. So this thing, this is probably what happens with Matic. It just kind of, come on now, give me the drawing tool. Meanders back in here. Most likely that. Okay. Uh, what else? AVAX. Let's take a look at AVAX here. And I'm looking at uh, Mutable X. Looking really good, by the way. AVAX. There we go. Uh, AVAX looking very good. Strong chart. chart. See, so that's the thing with these indicators. You can immediately, without hesitation, using the trade success checklist in your head, go boom. Yes. Buy order blocks. Crossover of the 21 day and 50 week EMA. Very bullish signal. And uh, ERI, TSI is going green. Signal is still red. That's okay. But I like this chart. And it looks to me like a uh, sort of a pennant forming. If you want to call it that or a bull flag. right? So if it's a bull flag, you got a nice looking flag pole there. And so if that's the flag. And you got this is the flag pole. I could do this better, obviously, you guys, but let's just do it quickly. And I don't want it. Copy, paste. There we go. Measured move on that $100. Well, that beats a sharp stick in the eye. And I have a note to myself by the dip. This was the dip, you guys. AVAX looking very strong on a weekly time frame. Let's look at it at a daily. And uh, a little bit uh, overbought short term, but that's okay. It's breaking out of this, if we want to call this a flag, flagpole, uh, that um, I, I do like this chart because it does appear to be a uh, breakout there of the flagpole. And um, some people draw these differently, but, but the chart pattern, bottom line, I like it. So anything else? Let's go back to our hot movers. I kind of got sidetracked there. Top movers, sometimes we find some good opportunities here. Again, we look for coins that have at least 100 million in market cap and volume. And um, so, but uh, I'm going to just skim for any that I might be familiar with. And then uh, ATOR protocol. We we found ATOR back in October on this hot list. And that thing ran a couple of hundred percent. That was a recommendation in Retire Rich. And we had, uh, I think it was 100% or a 200% gain on that. And so once it's once again, uh, let's go to a daily <clears throat> or a five day here. It looks like it's ready to go though. Again, Ator ready to go again. We have a rocket. This is a five day. So let me see and go to a daily here. You know, th there's some different nuances going into the higher time frame on days. You need to master the basics. I do like this chart. It's bottoming in this range. So ATOR, I don't really follow what they do. This looks ready to go. Have a rocket on the five day. Uh, I know we don't have talked about multi time frame rockets. So even without that, though, I, I would say that looks attractive. It could go from dollar to three dollars. That's potential 300, 400 percent on, on ATOR. We can know it can run. Not financial advice. I just like the chart. All right. What else do we have? And top movers. Orion Protocol, not familiar with these. Uh, Superverse, that's, of course, Elio Trades program. That is looking good. It was looking at Super last night. Not easy to find. It's on the offshore exchanges, uh, maybe on Uniswap. And, but look at that chart, you guys. Uh, Notice that last night was sharing that with um, Alex. I think you and I were talking about that on our coaching call. So big run up on that. Totally missed this. This is Elio Trades Gaming program product a thousand percent so that was a 10x since october and it's ready to roll again i know some big investors behind this uh who i won't name personally 
Um, but uh, let's see, if he's he's uh, anyway. Um, but this is ready to go. Another leg, you guys. This is in price discovery zone, not financial advice. But here's the thing: price discovery zone, great time where there's no selling pressure. Oh, forgive me. No, I take that back. When in doubt, zoom out. Um, yeah, it hasn't been around that long, but it's been around longer than I thought. Uh, so I take that back. It's not price discovery zone. However, it's a great looking breakout. And all you have to do is sort of look at these recent resistance areas. So it should go at least up to this $2 range. But here's the thing, what I, a barometer we're using, and I recommend is, is when, if it goes to old highs, not saying it will, but as a barometer toward other coins, this is a 4X. Now, gaming is going to be a hot narrative. Um, you, you know, this could be one to hold. It's right over a dollar. If you had a thousand dollars of this and you just put it away for five or ten years, I think you'll be really happy. Uh, and so, you know, again, I can give one to group advice. I can't give one to one financial advice. So that's not financial advice. Based on this chart, though, it looks like this is looking very good. And uh, I do recommend this top movers list, especially with our indicators. So if we open those up and it already had a bit of a run let's look at a weekly the weekly is the the longer term what it's likely to do and the it's showing a little bit overbought but i think this does push up at least to two dollars that's interesting so superverse keep an eye on that uh what else cartesi i've heard good things about let's just see how we doing on time and uh, let's see uh we've got a late comer here we've got a cash and we have uh, Cartesi. Let's look at these two, then we'll wrap it up. Pepe coin 2.0. I'm not sure what 2.0 means. Be careful with these uh, neat meme coins, you guys. Let's see. TRX you want to look at, Jerry says. I will try to squeeze that in. And um, uh, let's see. Alex also chiming in. Yeah, thank you, Alex. You're one of our longtime members. Uh, Alex is a great trader. So any advice that Alex gives, uh, I would listen to him. Super charts for Cartesi. Let's see. I'm trying not to open up too many charts at the same time. Uh, Cartesi. Where is it? It's on crypto.com. Uh, this super low volume. You know, this, uh, it's very thinly traded. I can tell, at least on this exchange. What do our indicators tell us? I'll go to a weekly and see. It's looking overbought here. But the chart is nice. So our our indicators are great at inflection points and pullbacks. Let me see what I should. So this is good on a weekly time frame for Cartesi. It needs to it needs to close here though. What I like is you have the weekly crossover the twenty one and fifty. Um, you know, if we had more time, I'd put all up an Ichimoku on that. That's really what we do more in our M three active trader class. Again, uh, I encourage you guys all to check that out. By the way, just go to our Moonstream.io page page and. Uh, Click here or go to moonstream.io slash M3. And this is our highest level training for active traders. We dive into the DXY and macro markets. And I have some unique studies that we talk about, including where I think the uh, next market cycle high and low is and how we get there. Uh, so you can check that out. But um, And you get the indicators for free. So Eagle, wait, what happened here? Cartesi, this is a breakout. But since we're on a weekly time frame, see this candle right back here. You want to make sure you see the close of whatever time frame you're in. This was a big old green candle, looked extremely bullish. People went leverage long on there, and then boom, what happened? Uh, we are half of the way into the week, just barely, not even. This could easily sell off, and this is the, see these topping tails on Cartesi. I would not uh, be going long here. I would buy it on a pullback to around this region off 21 and 50 day EMAs, and ideally, with our indicators turning from red to green. This is a bit ambiguous here. So uh, when in doubt, stay out. I would, uh, I'm not a huge, um, not very familiar with this. Nothing against it, just that's what I'm reading in the chart. Uh, let's see, TRX I heard. And if we go to, let's see, it's on MEXC, it's on Binance. Let's see, I know most of you are US based. So that's the problem with TRX is, uh, I think I have some on, on Tron somewhere. Uh, or uh, Kraken. TRX is Tron, isn't it? I haven't looked at it in so while. This is the futures. Uh, let's see. I'll just do TRX, the regular. We'll just do it on Binance. Yeah, Tron on Binance. 
somebody sent me some Tron. They made a payment in Tron one time, and I actually went up in value, but I, I did sell it. All right, what do we see on Tron? Just based on the chart, upward to the right, has a nice trend, longer term trend line. I like that. Twenty one day and EMA are going higher. What is the ATR? That our custom indicator that is in entry zone. See how it called it perfectly when it was trying to get back in there. And then uh, on the rest of these, there wasn't really a good reversal. That's why our early reversal indicator didn't show up. But uh, it's just kind of, this is where, you know, the the four kings aren't as valuable. Right now, as of today, we're getting a sell signal or on the bag of money here. And I would wait for, wait for two days and see if you get a new key in Bell. And then I would buy back because often we hit that, bag of money and it refreshes often it'll pull back so that's my read on on this but longer term tron sure very low volume though be careful with these very low volume uh it says five days ago news tron poised to lead stable coin payments on real world yeah so tokenization of real world assets is a, a big trend and we are teaching that and zeroing in on that industry in our retire rich class again that's for emerging markets tokenization of real world assets so that's interesting uh tron poised to lead that i might read that later because uh tr uh, uh sorry uh real world world assets um tokenization good to know i wasn't aware they were in the rwa area so in that sense i'm i'm more interested in what tron's doing they kind of got uh, a little bit forgotten about they hadn't really done much they were kind of a joke so I'm going to come back and look at that another time. All right, let me do a couple more, you guys. I uh, can't keep these too long because then we the recording takes forever to render. Uh, poised to leave stable coin payments. Is that what we just talked about, Tron? Chainlink. Uh, Chainlink surpasses Tron. Well, that would be a given. Chainlink is a, is a great project. Okay, we'll come back and look at that, or I'll go back and look at that. Now, where was the article I wanted to see? Was that this one? Yeah. So where did the movers and shakers page go? I think I lost it. So what do you guys want to look at? I think one of them... Uh, so Jerry says, I'm not sure at all if I'm reading things correctly. I just see it going up and have often heard people talk about TRX. I mean, Tron's been around forever. It has... You know, nice, uh, you know, story. I would do your own research. It, it's it's not a, probably the one of the better ones um, necessarily on the charts, but I'm a trader. That's what I trade. If you, you should invest in things that you like the story, have done your research, and you like the charts. Uh, here's another one, Sui, which is interesting. I, I do own Sui as a nice looking chart on here. Look at this. We had rocket indicators, one of our other signals, a rocket indicator, an ERI, a TSI signal and bell and boom, you guys can see the magic when uh, this starts to, uh, to go higher. Right. So let me do, let me just show you on that trade when these things start to line up right in here. So we had the rocket ERI in this range and 240% without a confirmed sell signal. We had a bearish ERI, but the signal line was still up in this blue range. Where was I? Where was it? Here? Sometimes you have to zoom in to see it. Uh, I guess it did It did pull down into sell zone, but at, at that point, still you were right up at 180%. But, but as long as it's above the hundred, the 21-day EMA, I'm, I'm sticking in there. I'm staying most times. Most times. Okay, somebody said Pith. Let's look at Pith. Uh, what happened here, guys? Something went awry. I hit F11 by mistake. Good thing I know how all these things work. Pith. Uh, Pith is an interesting project. Uh, it's a bit early. I mean, it um, has a lot of potential. Here's the thing with Pith. It's, uh, I mean, is this price discovery? It's fairly new. Uh, it could be around longer... I think this is right, though. So if this is correct, now we're all red on the radar. We haven't talked about the radar yet. So that's concerning to me. However, I would override that because we're up above this key support resistance area. Resistance becomes support. And we have decent volume down through here. And uh, But look at this. The ERI that triggered back in this range would have been an excellent entry. It went green TSI signal and bell. So we would have been in here. And... Um, 
written that thing up right now to me is here's the thing on the trade success checklist. It's not going to score. Well, we're all red on the radar. This is our longer term radar. I wonder why the daily doesn't look too bad. So what these are based off of, this is a multi time frame radar. You guys, it's a modified stochastics oscillator. And essentially this means it's overbought in the slower stochastics is crossing below the faster to see it all red. We developed this as an overall market barometer to help us. Here's an example. We knew to get out of the markets in December 2021 and in January 2022, very few people did. And the radar was designed to tell us when to get out. If it's all red, now Pith, it, it's not enough history. If this were Bitcoin right now, I'd say sell all your Bitcoin, maybe half of it. But when we will be watching for this to go all red and a weekly ERI red, and there's a couple other things I'm looking at to call the market top. We called it last time, uh, called it exactly last time, and we'll call it again. So on these shorter history coins, the radar is not as effective. So I guess that's the caveat, but it is an excellent indicator on the uh, longer term time frames. So if you look at ETH, uh, the, it's mostly green radar. That's what we want to see. Uh, Bitcoin probably mixed. Yeah, bearish on the daily, weekly bullish, monthly bearish, quarterly bullish. Uh, mixed signals here, guys. That's again why I think we pull back on that on that Bitcoin. So um, other than that, I don't have much else to say about Pith. It's kind of breaking into a, a new trading range. Maybe uh, get some, um, you know, that price discovery range. The market makers let it run, and that's a good time to own some. Uh, we are coming up. We're going running a bit long in class, you guys, but I was late, so that's my fault. I'll go a little farther. And part of the only reason I'll get off is because the the recording takes forever to render. So Caspa have been hearing good things on this, all red on the radar, having a bearish ERI. So this one is a bit tricky. Um, and now here's here's a nuance. I'm looking at the oscillator. I'm not getting an arrow because the time frame hasn't changed. The oscillator will trigger earlier than the arrow sometimes. Um, I like the chart. It's trying to break up above into price discovery mode. It looks like it held the, here's what I would say with Casper. I would sit on it because it's looking like it'll it'll barely hold. On a breakout, you want to see more of a breakout and a retest. I think this probably goes higher. You know, I think this probably goes higher, but uh, I think there's a higher chance, decent chance that this uh, does uh, pull back first. Okay, so when they barely break up and they can't quite hold it, Hold on, you guys. This little, uh, my thing keeps disappearing. I need to put it where I can grab it. Maybe I'll put it up here in the chart. That's what I need to do. Okay, so here, it's it's trying to hold. See where this thing closes at the end of the day. If it pulls back, though, I'd catch it right in here as it hits the 21 and 50 day EMA, and that'll give it that stronger breakout. Those of you that have been around for a while, you know that I'm pretty uh, prophetic with these uh, drawings. Just, uh, you know, doing this for 20 years, 10,000 hours, you know. Um, so that's what I would say on Caspa. It's a bit overbought on the other indicators, and but it is getting a new bell. We like a new key bell sequence, so that's bullish. But th with the caveat of these newer projects are going to have less, our indicators are going to have less reliability. Still good, but, uh, but yeah, I would wait for that. I'll put in a higher low also. That's what we want to see. You know, markets love support and the market structure. So we've got the EMAs, but I really want to see it come down, retest the support to bounce off of it. That's my read on Caspa. All right, let me just see anything else you guys want to see. Good class today. Thanks for your suggestions. Um, uh, let's see. Pirate J <laughs> about to sell a car. Someone left on my lot. Well, there you go. Pennies from heaven. Hope it was a nice car. Last four years, uh, how do you, I uh, wonder how you do that without title. Buy ETH. That's funny. If you ever see that person again, they say, sorry about my car. And you say, no worries. I turned it into ETH and a new nicer car. Uh, a lot of chat, chatter here. Otherwise, hold on, can stick to it, man. Yeah, thanks Thanks for being here. Like the uh, interaction, you guys. I'm going to call it a day because we're almost two hours in. If you like what you saw and you're on the YouTube watching a replay, uh, please like and subscribe. We are going to be doing these live streaming here in the near future. Um, bringing on a new team member to help with that. We're going to be doing more YouTube shorts, part of our classes, adding more value. And uh, 
appreciate all your comments here, you guys. And um, yeah, for short, you know, come, you can join us weekly here. We do go into more detail and give trade alerts in the M3 Active Trader, and uh, which is short-term swing trading. That's my background. And the Thursday Retire Rich class. So again, you can find out more about that on the uh, moonstream.io page. And uh, we have something for everybody. We do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have a limited amount of spots just because time is limited. And I uh, want to make sure I'm here for you guys. Some people need a little hand-holding. Uh, with that, I did just see the... Take one quick look at this. You know, they make it all scary and red, but it's only down 1.68%. The markets are resting here today and mostly red. Look, it's just a rest day. We need a little bit of a pullback, but mark my words, this next bounce will be epic. Be ready, everybody. Thanks so much. Thanks for your comments, everybody. Thank you, Leslie, Perry. Awesome. Good class, you guys. Sorry about the uh, troubles in the beginning. I will be more prepared next time. I have some, uh, had some uh, ETH, uh, sorry, Wi-Fi issues there, <laughs> but it happens. All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care.